So, uh, welcome back. <laughs> and we have, a, we have about a one hour uh, before we are able to relax and have some conversation over lunch. Um, we're going to move forward in this uh, conversation uh, to looking at the world of um, urban sensing. Goodness me, the potential uh, for us to uh, uh, get data, information about all aspects of what is going on in our cities. Uh, we're only just be touching the surface of what that potential is. Uh, and we're going to draw out uh, some ideas and thoughts about what's emerging in this whole arena and also some of the issues that that is uh, throwing up. Uh, to start us off, so we're, I've got you engaged again. We've, we've reset the, the questions uh, space within Slido. So again, even, um, I'm monitoring the questions and trying to pass some through within the time we've got available, but they're also, we're, we're collecting those because they give a really interesting litmus of some of the issues and thoughts that you are having. So that's a really useful uh, source of information to us. Um, on the world of Slidos, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a um, Slido question to start you off. So if you go onto your Slido with a poll, um, okay. Um, Anyone know what this is? Yeah, it's no, it's not a, it's not a waffle maker. Um, it is, a, it's a mobile sensing design, device. And this device, which can go on the top of a vehicle, a car, uh, on the top of a, a uh, safety helmet of a cyclist, on the back of a seagull, whatever, uh, is able to sense uh, temperature, humidity, air quality, and road quality as it is moving around. So our Slido question to you is, how many of these devices attached to taxis are needed to scan one third of Manhattan streets for temperature, humidity, air quality, and road quality in a day? OK, so how many of these are you going to have to stick on taxis in order to build up an amazing picture in one day of all those things? Is it, is it 10 of these, 50? 100, 200, Manhattan. We're going to go for Manhattan streets, but I'll not specify it with a further zip code. So it's, <laughs> it's more or less that. OK, so have a go. How many of these do you think we need? So there we go. I think we've probably give you, give you five more seconds. OK, so I think we've probably got critical mass to see whether we've got an answer. So there we go. 9% said 200. It is, in fact, you only need 10 of these. So there you are. OK, and this is available for $950, is it? $900, OK. But if you buy 10, you get one free, but you won't need it. So, so but this is how that sensing world, amazing uh, mobile devices like that, um, and that's just an interesting uh, part of work that's going on in the Sensible City Lab. Uh, and to offer just a few more thoughts um, as part of a kind of fire starter, um, if I can invite Priyanka D'Souza up to offer us one or two more, more thoughts around this, uh, this world. Thank you. So cities are leaky extensions of our human bodies. Urban infrastructure are a series of life-supporting systems that connect our bodies with vast technological networks. They blur the boundaries between the organic and inorganic and reshape and extend our body territories. By thinking about infrastructure in this way, we are able to understand and sort of delve into the socio-political discourses that gave rise to this infrastructure in the first place. Waste disposal systems such as this have basically encoded in them ideas about hygiene, about public health, about citizenship. Would you be surprised if I told you that the sewers in Boston, when they were first con constructed in the, late 80, in, the, in the late 18th century, were actually privately funded and were a key annexation strategy of the city of Boston to sort of get neighboring towns such as West Roxbury to decide to join them to take advantage of systems like this? So infrastructure basically have these complex histories. In this conversation, I'm actually going to talk to you about extensions of these cyborg systems. And I'm going to push you to think about what sort of data, what, what sort of values, what sort of 
uh, public health concerns, what sort of ideas about citizenship, about surveillance, et cetera, do we want to encode in these systems as we collect data from them and thereby change their function as we move forward? Also, how should we do this? So I'm gonna start by talking to you about waste disposal systems. For a very long time, epidemiologists have actually been collecting information text slash sewage from these systems and have actually been able to track things like the spread of diseases in cities. However, by the time these information texts sort of reach these places, a lot of data is lost. So can we do better? Presenting Underworlds. This project has turned what is a pipe dream into a pipe dream. <laughs> Our lab has actually gone through the whole Mario Brothers cast to come up with, to design and build robots that actually sample sewage closer to, at, at a neighborhood level and identify features of neighborhood, of neighborhood health, such as diet, such as stress, such as drug use. Um, these devices are also able to sort of track diseases and, can ha and have huge public health uh, connotations. And we're so excited that one of our former lab researchers, Nusha, is on this panel to talk to you about her journey uh, in, in this project and beyond. Uh, let's move up from sewers and uh, let's talk about another life-supporting system, trash trucks. So in this, in this project, our lab actually converted these routine objects, these routine systems, into sensing platforms. So presenting um, City Scanner, it's the project that, um, that was just spoken about, actually. So trash trucks cover the entire city every week. They travel everywhere in the city every week. So we've actually had these modular sensor platforms on top of these urban vehicles, and cities can really choose what kinds of sensors they want. Do they want air quality? Do they want temperature? Do they want thermal cameras to measure energy efficiency? And they come with, these, with this cool sort of interface, which not only allows you to understand like air quality at a particular point in the city, but also understand how air quality on a particular day sort of compares with air pollution on previous days, how it compares with other road segments. So we're really excited about this project. Similarly, you can sort of, you can, um, we're able to identify the energy efficiency of buildings using thermal cameras. Um, and you, and you, we're very happy. Um, I, I, what we, we'd, be, we'd love you to check this project out on our lab website. So we're able to use this data to help people understand the spaces in which they, they interact. Moving forward, if all of this talk about sewage and trash trucks have made you uncomfortable, we only have good vibes, good vibrations for you. In this project, we've actually, we're actually using humans and our companion species mobile phones uh, to basically track the health of urban infrastructure, such as bridges. So right now, there are more than uh, 50,000 bridges in the United States which are crumbling and which, um, and, 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 and this project actually allows us to use our mobile phones to track uh, the vibrations of these bridge, bridges and really understand whether they, whether they would hold up to inspection. And this project actually found that with basically two uh, mobile sensors, we were actually able to get data at um, 102 times more precise than, than two fixed sensors um, on the bridges. So this, this, this project really has immense implications for human health. Uh, of course, doing this work is not without its challenges and risks and drama, <laughs> but it all just adds, adds to the excitement of, of it. So with that, um, I'm really looking forward to the discussion and thank you. Thank you very much.